This podcast is brought to you by Blue Belt Contracting. They are a local contracting service. One of my good friends, Aaron Edwards, works with them. And I just want to give them a quick shout out. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this podcast. You guys are amazing. If you guys have any home improvement needs, these guys are super cool. Their their website literally says the honest, integrity, reliability. That's what anybody wants out of a company. So go check them out. They're on Facebook at Blue Belt Contracting. You can reach out to them there, or you can and, or you can give them a call at 903-517-2227. All right, guys, let's get this thing started. Welcome to another Paris, Texas, a podcast. This is a podcast where you get to listen to people's stories, people that have either influenced or lived in the city of Paris, Texas. I love hearing their stories, and I can't wait for you to hear the next guest. Alright guys, I am super excited about this guest, as I say about all my guests, but l- let me just say, I recently met this guy probably about two months ago, and prior to that I had no earthly idea who he was, uh, not because of what he's done in the town, just because he's in a different area of expertise than I'm in, um, but Danny Booth, what is up? Hey, what's up, my man? So if somebody were to know you, where would they know you from? Uh, Paris, Texas. Paris, Texas. Is that where you're born? I was born right here in Paris, Texas. Yep. Awesome. Born, and yep. when was that? That would have been a long time ago. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was back in the... Stone Age? Oh, yeah. A long Just time ago? right after 1969. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, where did you go to school? Um, started out... Uh, in Dallas, actually, when I was when I was young, my parents moved us to Dallas uh, because my dad had got a job uh, as a jeweler over there in downtown Dallas. So we moved to a little community called uh, Lancaster, which is south of Dallas. And so I did uh, I did like kindergarten and first grade, maybe half of second grade in Lancaster, and then we moved back to Paris. Uh, in 1978 uh, to finish up my second grade year at, now, at, at, at East Paris School. Okay. Yeah, so the school's wow. not even there. Not even there anymore. Not even there. So, man, that was a neat school. Now, I've met um, your dad, right? Oh, yeah. He does not seem like a jeweler, jeweler to me. Oh, he is a jeweler. Was he that his whole life? I mean, uh, this isn't his podcast, but I just, just that intrigued me. So... Yeah, um, man, we could go into a whole another deal about this. So he had a he had an accident uh, before I was born, and uh, it messed him up really really bad. And so he went to one he went to PJC and uh, started jewelry school. Um, before that, I think he was working at uh, B and W, which is now Turner, I believe. Yeah, something like that. So he was out at the boiler plant just you know, grunting it out, and uh, my sister was born at that time, and then, of course, he he built a hang glider, and, yeah. As, as one would always do. Did I say, he built a hang glider, <laughs> and it didn't work out so well, you know, so crashed it. Anyway, um, became he, a jeweler. He became a jeweler. <laughs> awesome. Exactly. And so, yeah. All right, so y'all moved back. Second grade year. Second grade year. Did he get a job being a jeweler here? He did. He did? I believe. Uh, and then in, did you finish out? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Um, so did you finish school at East Paris? Did you go all the way through? Okay, so I like second grade so much I went twice, okay? <laughs> it was it was that much fun, Yeah. right? The playground yeah. was awesome. So, um, the second time I went through second grade, at the end of second grade, Aiken had opened, and so for my third grade year, we transplanted to Aiken. Okay. And they shut East Paris down. Okay. So I went Aiken, uh, at that time it was third, fourth, fifth grade, then Crockett Middle School, six, seven, eight, 
and then Paris High School through graduation. So what was your thing in high school? What was like? What did you enjoy doing the most? Uh, man, I, I, let me tell you, I was racing bikes since I was 12 years old. So I didn't, I didn't go hang out a whole lot. I mean, I had, I had the best friends in the whole world, you know, and everybody was, everybody got along good on the weekends. These guys would go do what they did, and I was at home prepping bikes for racing. Bicycles so, or motor, uh, motocross? Motocross. Okay. And you had started racing at 12? 12 years old. Yeah. So prior to that, I, I'd always wanted a motorcycle, and my dad said, okay, son, you can have a motorcycle whenever you can afford it. So my little brain went to work, and at 12 years old, I uh, went and applied for a Social Security card. At that time, that you weren't born with them, right? Yeah. And then I proceeded to go straight to the Paris News, where at that time they would allow you to uh, have a paper route on a bicycle. You know, kids throw paper routes, yeah. right? I don't think they do that anymore. Right I don't here, think do so. So, a lot about my age. You had to be 13. So I lied about my age. They had no way to verify that. Uh, got a job went home and told my dad I'm fixing to uh, have the money to buy that motorcycle I've always wanted and he was just like okay well we'll see this goes so made it about I don't know three or four months into that and he walked in one day and said come on you know I want to show you something and we went out the country and he had bought me this really dilapidated tore up Yamaha YZ80 it paid 50 bucks for this thing. Wasn't even sure it ran. And we get it home, and, and of course, being a motorhead, I was. And, and I was motorhead way before what we're talking about. And uh, got the little bike running. So, you know, all through all through middle school, high school, that's what I did was I raced bikes all was over that, the country. I was going to say, was that local or was that all over? Yeah, I mean, most of it was local, Texas local. Uh, but, you know, we did venture out and uh, had a lot of success. Awesome. So, graduating from high school, what was your plan? Um, graduating from high school, I, at that point, I had uh, been working for a local shop here in town uh, as a uh, kind of sweeping floors and things like that. And I knew that, you know, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, uh, to, to be in the hot rod side of things, you know, and and to uh, to build cars, stuff like that. So. Um, after high school, I knew that uh, I wanted to I wanted to be in the automotive industry, so I packed up everything and moved to Austin, Texas. I was going to go to school. My my big dream was to be a uh, to be a lawyer, but really, yeah, I'm not saying you couldn't do that. I just you, that surprises me. It surprises me. No, I mean, that's, that's really what I wanted, you know. So I moved to Austin and started going to uh, Austin Community College, uh, racing bikes down there, working at a shop. And I got hooked up with uh, with some a group of guys that owned a shop on UT campus that from a, a, a tech class that I was in. And they said, man, you need to come over here and, and work with us. So I ended up going over to uh, work at a little shop called Flamingo Automotive. And, that and, sounds like a cool place. Oh, dude, this guy had, he had it together. I mean, he was, at the time, I think he was 27, 28 years old, and music's playing inside. It was a good vibe. Had young guys, smart guys, technicians that worked there, and everybody that lived near that campus brought their cars there. And he was making a killing. And so I was like, I can do this. This, this could be me. So... That was in 1990, so 19 late 1990, uh, I moved home, moved back to Paris, and told my parents that's what I wanted to do. And so in 1991, June of 1991, I opened my first automotive repair shop on the corner of 24th and Clarksville across from PJC, and I, I pretty much mimicked everything he did. I changed the colors and didn't call it the same name. Uh, but what, what was it called? Uh, Technique Automotive. Okay. And, man, we played the music, and uh, we had sharp guys that worked there. Uh, a lot of my friends 
that uh, loved the, the automotive industry, worked for me. You know, from time to time, people came and went. You know how it is. But, uh, man, ask any of my group of friends, and everybody's going to tell you that was the place to be, especially after school, man. When everybody got out of high school, of course, we were up there, and we were, we were hanging out, and we didn't mind anybody just stopping in and hanging out. You know, we had a, a really uh, relaxed vibe up there, and it was, it was just fun. Yeah. You know, we had a lot of fun. Awesome. So you mimicked him, mm-hmm. and it worked. I think it was- oh, it worked like from day one. Okay, so day one, I didn't have the money to remodel this place, and it needed everything. So my parents helped me out, and they loaned me some money, and it wasn't much. You know, we're talking hundreds of dollars, you know? Yeah. And so went in, power washed the whole thing, repainted everything, did it all myself, you know, with the help of my buddies, and... Uh, we got it all cleaned up and just really, really nice looking, presentable, very professional looking. Yeah. Kind of like Colin Hadley's place up there on Lamar, man. I mean, that is a top-notch place. And so, yeah. you know, that's that's kind of how we had this. And so day one, when I opened the doors, I had $12. $12. And so, that of course, we, we had to re- have the locks replaced. You know, because the uh, the the owner of the building had all the keys, and so we said, "Okay, we're putting new locks." So after the locks were placed, we had twelve dollars, and I was like, "I just don't know how this is going to work out with twelve dollars." But by the end of the day, we had about fifteen cars on our parking lot. Wow! Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. That's amazing. Hell oh, yeah! It was good. So how long did that? How long did that happen? Was that? How long were you in that field? Oh golly, man. We okay, so that's a that's a whole story. We started that one in ninety one, went uh in nineteen ninety seven I opened a second location which is downtown. Really? You know where the splash pad is? Yep. Okay, so that used to be an old Firestone building. So it was like six bays was that right, Kevin? Six bays long. Right where the splash pad is. Exactly where the splash pad is. I don't I don't remember and we this. We had this huge um uh, showroom up front and a, a nice parking lot so that was my second location you know we had several lifts in there and we had a front end alignment machine and all that stuff and um, so the Methodist Church came in and they were buying the bill I didn't own any of the building we were just leasing mm-hmm. and so about that was in 97 so about 98 I believe the I'd closed down the one on Clarksville because the one downtown was becoming so successful and it was, it was bigger. much bigger yeah so we shut Clarksville Street down moved everything downtown and then the Methodist Church came to us and said you know they bought the building and we we're gonna have to find a new place well oh, I was destroyed I was oh my god you know because anybody that knows anything about business around Paris Texas locations everything yeah if you're on the wrong side of the tracks long side of town people yeah. aren't going to come there for whatever reason they'll drive to Dallas for the same product or service but they won't come to this side of town in Paris yeah you know and it's really weird I don't know why that is so ended up talking to um, what uh, the people that owned what what is now Doctors Creek Marine on oh, the yeah, corner yeah, yeah, of yeah. 17th and Clarksville yeah okay so that was McDougal Cadillac so I talked to Rick McDougal and uh, he agreed. He was man. He was great, helping me get started in the new building. And so he let us go in and clean it up. And and we started. He started my lease off uh, where I could afford it, you know. And then you know, as as we grew in there, it went up. But we had a lot of success out of that building. So then <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> Another friend of mine that I'd been working on his car for quite a while came to me and he said, "Do you want a place out on the loop?" And I was like, well, I can't afford a place on the loop. And he said, well, I didn't ask you if you could afford it. Do you want one? Well, yeah, of course. You know, so went out on the loop and right between Toyota Paris and Discount Well and Tire, there was a uh, auto parts store is what it was years ago. What, Kevin, what was that? Automotive or A plus automotive? Okay. Anyway, so uh, he owned the building or he had bought the building or was buying the building and said, do you want to put your shop in here? And I was like, again, I, I can't afford this. And he said, 
I didn't ask you, do you want to do it? Yes, of course I want to do it. And so, man, this guy just went the extra mile. Yeah. Nothing out of my pocket. He did all the remodel. Good friends. Oh, my God, dude. I mean, it was a blessing just fell from the sky. Yeah. You know? And so, got us up in there, and, and we had 12. We in, It was all internal, but we had 12 bays. Uh, then we had a, a, a larger section that did stereos and window tinting. Um, and then, of course, up front, we sold high-performance parts. Rented a small place to Enterprise. I think they're still there. Yeah. 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 So Enterprise is, Enterprise is still there, but, you know, since we moved out... Uh, we moved out in 2005, so yeah, I think it was around 2005 I, I got out of the automotive industry um, for different reasons. Uh, one, I was burned out. Two, we had uh, walked into another great deal where uh, I had met up with a friend that was working for a fitness franchise, and he was looking for somebody to build fitness equipment. And I said, well, I can build fitness equipment. Yeah. Well, what do you know about that? I build race cars. Okay. Well, so. When did you get into racing cars? Uh, got into racing cars, I'm guessing that was around 99, 98, 99. And that was dirt 99. track, right? That was dirt track racing. Um, my buddy Eric Clifford came, to, uh, came up to the shop one day and said, this one we were on 17th and Clarksville. He came up there and said, hey, let's go out to the... Uh, dirt track races I was like man yeah, and, and we had drag race before that you know and I was like I do not want to go out and watch a bunch of guys run around in the mud and yeah. it, you know I like drag racing it was clean um, and you know everything was squared away it just seemed like dirt track racing was redneck and dirty and whatever mm-hmm. so he said well let's just go out there and you check know, it out. Check it out. I'll buy your way in. I was like, okay, let's go. So we got out there, and they had some classes that were all beat up looking cars. And then all of a sudden, they pulled out these what they call a modified out on the track. And I was like, well, wait a minute, what is that? You know, Whoa. that looks like a tube chassis car there. And these things were bad fast. And he said, would you like to have one of those? And I, well, of course I'd like to have one of those. <laughs> So the next thing I know, he's out buying one, a used one. And, man, we just we took it completely apart, put it back together with all new stuff, and went racing. And I sucked bad. Anytime someone does something for the first time, it's going to be that way. So, I mean. So, but you fell in love with it. Immediately. Yeah, it didn't take. And so, before, actually, before we got the modified, Eric had bought us a... Uh, what you call a bomber car? All right, so we had this 70 model Plymouth Belvedere. You got to put a roll cage in it, some seat belts, stuff like that. And um, so the driver holds the uh, steering wheel and brake, and the passenger has the gas pedal. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. So here we are in this Plymouth Belvedere, straight six, three on the tree. I got Jay Kroll sitting to my right co-pilot well he's got the gas pedal man we we had a ball we made it i don't know we probably did we we did two races before we blew the little six cylinder up and then we eric bought us a uh uh 318 or i think it was a 318 uh v8 automatic transmission we put that in there and man we were off we made it a couple races and then you know by that time, we had the modified ready and and uh, rocking and rolling. Rocking and rolling. That's awesome. So that started like a whole, like almost side career for you. The the racing, right? Like, even though you still did all the mechanic stuff, you were still doing racing on the side, like a side hustle. Uh, man, I don't know if you'd call it a hustle because there's no way to make money at it. <laughs> I mean. So it was more of a hobby. Oh, it was definitely a hobby. Now, for me, it was great because I had somebody else paying for my hobby. Yeah, you know, man. they just liked going racing, and so it, it worked out well. It was um, a hobby. It was an yeah, it's an addiction. Kevin's right; it's an addiction. Um, 
but yeah, I had a lot of fun with that stuff. So I, I wouldn't say it was a, it, it was never intended to be a job. Um, in 2005, no, let me back up. 2004, I'm guessing, um, the company I was building the fitness equipment for mm-hmm. uh, filed bankruptcy. So, so you, you lost that gig. Lost that gig. I mean, that was a good gig. Mm-hmm. So I owed a bunch of people a bunch of money. And at that point, you know, I, I had to figure out what I was going to do. I just refused to file bankruptcy, you know, because everybody in this town that had extended me credit that I may have owed, I had to make sure they were getting paid back. Yeah. And so I made the decision. I got online and I found, uh, I found some job openings in Iraq and signed up and, and got a job in Baghdad, Iraq. And so I went there from 2005 to 2010. Wow. Yeah. And you were married at this time, right? No. No. no I was not married. Oh, okay. So. Uh, well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd been over there. I was dating at the time. And, uh, you know, 9,000 miles away is, is pretty tough on a relationship. So I'd gone to my HR department and my boss and, and you know, we had a good relationship, and I just said, "Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not threatening anything here. I'm just saying that if uh, I can either figure out a way to get her here, or I've got to go home because this is this is really tearing at me." Yeah. And so it just worked out where there were some openings, and they said, "Here's how you post for it," you know. And so it was all legit. She posted for it, got a job and ended up on the same base as I did. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so it was great. That's so, a cool story. Yeah, so I would, like I said, I'd been there 18 months, and so I was there five years total, and she spent three of those five with me over there. Awesome. And so... What did she do? She was actually a uh, admin assistant in our construction camp. I worked construction, and so uh, our offices were literally 30 feet apart you know so i made it awesome of course yeah. you know you're working 712s it's uh it was it was tiring mm-hmm. grueling hot uh but man we saw the world we went we went we went all over awesome you know, instead of coming back to america we just we'd catch a plane to somewhere that's you know? awesome oh it was great on your days off yeah, so you'd work uh, you'd work four months and then you get sixteen days. Okay. To uh, to go do your thing, then come back. And y'all just travel. We travel. That's awesome. I'm not saying every time, you know, we came yeah. back every now and then to see the family, but for the most part, we were we were gone, man. We found some quiet little islands down in in the Gulf of Thailand. Spent uh, spent a lot of time down there where there was nobody. Um, man, we we've cruised the Mediterranean twice making me jealous uh, here oh it, i mean the things i've seen is is I, I can't even describe it it's i've lived four lifetimes in one lifetime well, that's amazing all right so five years there mm-hmm. and then you came where'd you go did you come back so while we were there um nicole got pregnant awesome yeah and so um she came home and uh got bought bought us a little house you know we'd we'd looked at it together and she said that's the one i want so we bought the little house so she got home in may i'm guessing of 2010 and i stayed behind and uh, just trying to put a few more dollars in the bank Mm -hmm. and um, so i came home in august late august 2010 yeah so while we were there um, I decided that I wanted to race for a living. When I get home, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> and that's um, a that's man. a that's a big thing. <laughs> oh, it was a big thing. And in these modified, so the uh, had you raced since you'd been there? Oh no, okay. yeah. And the speed limit on these bases is like 15. 10, <laughs> 10 mile an hour, right? Fifteen, right? And so while we were overseas. I proceeded to buy a toter home, stacker trailer, 
you know, a big rig stuff, mm -hmm. you know, super, super nice stuff, had spare motors, rear ends, enough that we could go out on the road. So this uh, touring series that I wanted to go run with was the uh, United States Modified Touring Series, USMTS. And this is these are the elite uh, of dirt track modified racers. I mean, if, if you were gonna say, they're equivalent to NASCAR on dirt. On dirt. But in that class, you know, okay. in that class. And so these are the guys I wanted to go run with. This is what I want to do, make some money, you know, racing for a living, get sponsors, blah, blah, blah. So get home, been home one week. Uh, my daughter, my daughter Ava was born. Been home, and my clock still wasn't right, you know, so everything's... Four yeah, in the, four in the morning. I'm wide awake. Yeah, you know. So anyway, Ava's born, and I hit the road, and man, we were we were traveling. And what was that first race like? Oh, it, it horrifying. Horrifying. I mean, it was. <laughs> I mean, here I am in the nicest car we've ever had more horsepower than I could ever had imagined in the in the cars we'd run before and we ran nice stuff before but this stuff was just over the top and we were at Baytown Texas I'm running and this is in practice so I'm going down the back stretch got the car just twisted over on the bars we're running I, 130, 135 mile an hour, it's 9,200 RPM. And this guy went by me like I was in reverse. And I was like, how in the heck is he doing this? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? So the guy that actually built my car was a nine time national champ, he was there. So I got back to my truck and trailer. I went, Kelly, what is going on? He was like, man, you're only three tenths of a second off my lap. You're fine. I was like, no, I'm not fine. Did you see that guy pass me like I was going backwards? <laughs> and he's, yeah, it's okay. Hey, don't worry about that. You're fine. You're fine. Everything's fine, as Jay would say, right? Yeah, as Jay would say. Hey, everything's fine. Everything was not fine. <laughs> <laughs> so get out there with the uh, with the big boys. Yeah. And man, just couldn't qualify. I had the nicest stuff you could buy. Could not qualify. Frustrating. You know, these guys, when I pulled up there with all my new toter home and stacker trailer, and I, I was really, really proud of all my stuff. We pulled in there, and these guys had 18-wheeler rigs just right out of NASCAR. Yeah. I'm talking, and they were paying their crew chiefs, and they had all these teams, and I was like, Man, it was me and my dad. <laughs> and another buddy, he had gone with us for the first time named Dustin. And we, I was like, man, we were outclassed. I thought we were doing good, but this is... Outgunned a little oh, bit. Yeah, we were outgunned, man. We were outmoneyed. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. bad. So how long did you keep that up? Man, we ran, um, ran out on the road for about six months chasing that stuff. It was costing us about $1,500 a night. We were racing five nights a week. To win one of those races, paid $2,000. Uh, Non-qualifier money, which I got a lot of, was 300 bucks, which is, it gave us just enough fuel in the truck to get us to the, the next, next race. race. <laughs> Sounds like yeah. that might've been by design. Oh, I'm pretty sure it was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I had a lot of fun and I can, I can check that off my bucket list. Yeah. You learn a lot from that, I'm sure. Oh my gosh, I raced with the best there was, you know. So you wrapped up your racing series. What what was next for you? Man, I wasn't sure. You know, um, still had some money sitting in the bank, so we started uh, buying houses, remodeling, flip houses. Awesome. Um, had the opportunity to uh, buy a hair salon. Bought a hair salon for. Did you, did you cut the hair? I did not. <laughs> I don't think they would appreciate that. Uh, learned a lot. Yeah. Uh, I can promise you that. Learned a lot. And so did that, Kevin, what was that, two year, a year, two, a year and a half, two years? I don't know. Anyway, so we sold the hair salon and... Uh, 
Who did what? <laughs> Back to the period you bought it from. Yeah. So then went uh, trying to figure out what we we're going to do. And in the middle of flipping some houses, another friend of mine came along and said, Hey, he showed me a set of drawings. He said, Hey, you think you can do this? And I was like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. And he said, This is this is all the the uh, antenna configuration on a cell phone tower. And I was like, Well, what do you mean? Can I do it? Can we build these? And I was like, Can I build a tower? And he's like, No, no. Can we can we put all the antennas? Can you do this stuff? And I was like, Well, yeah, man, I can do anything, you know. <laughs> so we started a company, and we were working with. Uh, at that point, we were working strictly through Sprint and uh, setting all their new uh, radio equipment at uh, at the base of towers. Okay. So did that for a year and a half, I guess, or so. And and uh, I, I had seen these tower crews come through that were actually climbing the towers and, and putting antennas and stuff. And I was like, well, that's where the money's at. And so uh, I ended up buying my partners out and we expanded and bought, retooled everything and got, uh, got some climbers and we started doing the 4G LTE upgrades for AT&T. Awesome. And so we did that all over the country. Um, More travel. You've traveled a bunch. Traveled a lot. I, we, could, we could sit here for hours. I mean, we were just touching the surface on this stuff. So we did that. Um, AT&T bought out DirecTV, is that right? Or did DirecTV buy out? A no, AT&T AT bought out DirecTV. DirecTV. Yeah. So when they did that, uh, in 2015, they cut their uh, construction schedule just down to nothing. Their new construction for the 4G uh, rollout. And so the guys that had been working for these companies for a while, the, the crews that had been there longer got all the they got the work and we were kind of pushed out oh, you know and so at that point we shut that down and um, I went to work for a local uh, construction company that uh, just took me right in and showed me the ropes and had a lot of you know had a lot of success with them and then I got another offer from a construction company the first one I was with uh, I was gone all the time. Yeah. You know, and if we had a job that was close to home, if it was two hours, you know, I would try to drive it every night. And that's just, it, it's hard. Yeah. And so uh, the second construction company that approached me had a job local. We were going to, I wasn't going to be in the field. I was going to be in sales. Mm -hmm. And so I jumped on it. Awesome. So, yeah, I rocked along there with them for six eight months and uh, the whole time I'd been wanting to get started in in doing some metal fab yeah. work custom fab work yes so uh, rocked along there for six seven months and they started downsizing and I got caught in the downsizing and so I got to uh, go home and tell my wife one morning hey I'll be in the shop um, because working <laughs> We're about to uh, start another, building another company. <laughs> another company. Yeah. So. Awesome. And you're actually really good at it. I've seen some of your work. Um, well, thank you. Uh, f fabulous. You do a lot of stair stair rails, staircases, door door entries, uh, gate, metal gate entries, stuff like that, right? Yeah. The more complicated, the better. The better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I really like the, the really intricate stuff in the... The stuff that's going to challenge us. Um, and here comes my favorite part when I met you. <laughs> so I'm going to tell a little bit of this because I'm really excited about this. Let's do it. Uh, so a couple months ago, uh, I come across a, a ad on Instagram uh, sponsoring a Red Bull soapbox race. So uh, my buddy Jay and I, Jay Ryan, he's on. he's been on the podcast, go back and listen to his, um, decided that we were going to do this thing. And we came up with this crazy idea. We had characters. We had a really, a really ridiculous idea for a car. And we kept telling the guys at MEO, like, oh, we got this. We got this. Don't worry about it. Um, it's going to be fine. It's gonna, Jay's, Jay, <laughs> Jay's go-to line is, it's going to be fine. 
So, um, uh, our, my buddy Casey Wrestler, also been on the podcast, comes Casey's up. Casey's a old friend of mine as well. Yeah, he's told stories about watching you build cars in the shop when he was younger. Yeah, we we'll get into that one not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Casey's like, I got this buddy. He's like, I don't know, I don't know how busy he is right now, but I'm gonna call him up and see what he's doing. And and he told us a little bit about Danny's uh, history, which y'all have heard already. And I was like, ah, oh, there's no way this guy's gonna want to spend all this time building this car for us. So Danny comes up, and we show him what <laughs> we show him what Jay and I are thinking. And JD, uh, Danny's Bunch of parts laying in the floor yeah. Yeah. and a drawing and us acting like a fool. So Danny looks over. This is the first I, the first thing I remember Danny saying to me. He's probably said other stuff, but this is the first thing I remember. He looks over at me and says, "Do you want to go down the hill or do you want to win?" I think that was the first thing I said. That's the first thing he said. And obviously, me and Jay look at each other, look back at Danny, say, we want to win. He goes, well, then none of this is going to work. <laughs> yeah, all of this, we're throwing this away. This so gonna... I had to email Red Bull because we were on in contacts and I already told them what we were going to do and tell them, hey, so we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, and they actually were really cool with it. Danny started, I mean, he he you could see the mathematics and – the clock ticking. He started drawing all this stuff up and on a piece of cardboard. On a piece of that cardboard we can't find. that we still I, I can't find. I needed that piece of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we had we had a little model that we were working off of and a bunch of pictures online and and we were gonna build this thing. Um, and then we needed something to show because we had a video crew coming out to film us, so we still oh, needed. Oh yeah, to, I remember that. We needed to show them something, and this is the. I mean, all of this was super cool about Danny, but at that moment, Danny's like, all right, we need to build something for Red Bull to see. So he turns around, and he builds us this uh, five-wheel tricycle. tricycle. It's not really a tricycle because it's got five wheels, but five-wheel fike. I think that's what we call it. Let's call it a fike, yeah. A fike. And (laughs) he builds it in like 20 minutes. Well, yeah, I mean, Kevin. Yeah, we... uh... (laughs) Me and Jay watched you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how helpful we ever were. But he builds this thing, and it was, I mean, it wasn't, it was nothing like the end product. But the fact that he spent 20 minutes and built something functioning was amazing. Yeah, I had to give you something to show, right? Yep, and we showed it. It was a, it was a very yeah, funny so video. Yeah, so we were driving down uh, Lamar Avenue. I think that was on a Sunday, right? Yeah. And uh, looked over, and I saw the Red Bull crew, and I was like, Kevin, should we pull in? He was like, I don't know. So we kept on going. Casey calls me immediately. He says, was that you that just passed? And I was like, yeah. And he said, turn around. Okay. So we went back, you know, and uh, we didn't we didn't pull back there in the back where you guys were. I saw the film crew out there with you guys. And y'all were in character. And, and uh, y'all had the fike out with the cardboard. Okay. Packing tape. Yeah, what was the shape of that thing? It was an eggplant. Egg yeah. So y'all had the eggplant, and uh, so we sat in there and and uh, talked to uh, talked to Casey and uh, Kevin. Watched yeah. you guys through the back window. That was awesome. But after that, what happened was is uh, we ended up meeting nights and weekends, and uh, we ended up getting together, and you built. The best looking. I mean, I I'm still shocked that that people weren't just falling over in in like shock. The best looking downhill soapbox I've ever seen. Well, thank you. It was, and I mean, again, the, the whole process. I filmed some. You can go and watch some videos. It's on the uh, Max Elevation uh, uh, Facebook. But the, it was just like watching a Albert Einstein and his mathematics just working, and they would just draw stuff on tables, and I don't even know what the, the circles and lines and um well the fun part of that was you know we decided we we wanted to hand fabricate everything everything, everything that we could you know we i didn't want to go buy a four wheeler and, and just dismantle it and, and then re- reassemble and, it and put all those parts on there yeah you know if we're going to have a front independent suspension then we're going to build it and that's exactly what we did yeah you know, we built a-frame spindles um shock mounts 
uh, all the steering. Do you remember how complicated that the steering, steering was, was, man? <laughs> trying you, to get the uh, trying to get the bump steer out. You of had that a thing. few sleepless nights trying to figure oh that my steering God. out. Oh God, it was horrible. <laughs> I had a soapbox that was keeping me up at night. <laughs> <laughs> So we made it all the way. We got through uh, uh, Ross Malone. That's his last name? That's right. Malone. Ross Malone at Dirty, Dirty Deeds, Deeds Motorsports. He hooked us up, built us a body. Yeah, and he was my go-to guy for uh, for that stuff. I've got several friends. I know how to do that stuff, but I'm so out of practice. And as you saw, Ross. that if you don't, uh, if, if you're not in practice, you're going to waste a lot of metal. Yeah. And that metal's expensive. I mean, well, there's a there's a process in which you got to bend that stuff. I mean, if if you're putting a some type of special fold or lip in it, if you don't bend it in the right sequence, you're it's done because you'll never get back to that point. Yeah. And he knew exactly. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he started drawing stuff out, and I was like, well, I knew this is why I came to Ross. Right. You know, because he does it all day, every day. All day, every day, and he did. I mean, he. Four hours. Four I, hours. I, we had a complete body for the soapbox, which you can actually go see. It's it's on display at Maximum Elevation oh, right I, now. I recommend it. This thing was so much fun. Now and it's you can tell it's been ridden too. Yeah, it's been ridden. That's what I was to say. Like it, it's it's post race. We've already done the race. Uh, Danny came down, watched the whole race. He actually filmed some of it because we like I was in the car driving, um, and we slaughtered that thing. Well, we got that, fourth out of forty seven. Well, there's two hundred fifty entrants. Yeah. After tech, there were 48 cars. I think it was 47? 47, 47. Okay. And to see my creation with you guys, you guys made us look good. Dude. You know, y'all made us look so good. Me and Kevin Coker were standing. We were so proud, man. We were, I mean, watching y'all go down that hill, I mean, to uh, y'all hit that first jump, and the crowd was going crazy. And, you know, I could hear the commentators and, you know, I'm trying to focus on the TV because I'm trying to see how the truck's working. Yeah. You know, as you are going through the little whoop de doo section and the commentators, well, those big old wide tires, you know, that's just going to scrub speed. Wrong. No, we hit. So the, fir- the first part of the track was a little flat. And then after the the wobbles, I don't know what they're called. Whoop, let's call them whoop de doos whoop de doos I don't know. Uh, we hit the the hill part of the whole the whole thing. The That's downhill. What, yeah, and yeah. I mean, you. I I think I remember hearing. As I'm driving, I'm hearing like they're picking up speed. Yeah, that's what they were saying. It was and awesome because they were at first they were saying, "Well, those wide tires, that's a lot of contact patch, and that's never going to work." Oh my God, look at this! They're flying down the These hill. These guys are putting down the fastest lap time. Dude, we were flying. Uh, I, to be honest, there's not much that I remember. Um, the the two main things that I remember is that last that last ramp. You don't was, remember the car wash. I don't remember the car wash at all. I don't even know. I don't even know what the car wash was. It like, was nothing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, you just blew right through it. You uh, guys had. Uh, oh yeah, y'all y'all were tunnel vision. Um, the last big ramp. Ugh. We hit that the fastest. We, I mean, I think we were clo- miles yeah, an hour. We were clocked at thirty-eight miles an hour in a non-motorized vehicle. The, and we hit that sucker hard. I mean, we hit it, boom, boom, and we fly up, and then we get a little nose heavy. Yeah, and came down. Yeah, well, I, I watched the video hundreds of times trying to figure out why the truck reacted that way, and uh, what I what I've surmised is that. It actually bottomed those little shocks out. Yeah. When it, when it bottomed out, it just pitched the front over. Well, you had told us from the beginning, and we had trouble finding it, that we needed shocks that had a bigger uh, travel. Yeah, we didn't have much travel. We had two but, inches of travel, and you wanted six to seven inches of travel. Right. But, um, you know, hey, but we, we, were, we were on a budget. We, were, we had a uh, weight limit we had to match. Yep. So... I mean, there's only so much we can do. That was the, that you was know, what it came down to. It came down you, the last day. We're cutting weight. Yeah, we're trying to. We're cutting weight. Floorboard made out of what? Yeah, <laughs> it was a tailgate. Uh, uh, yeah, one of those fabric a, tailgates. A tailgate net. A tailgate net. That's floorboard. That was a floorboard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was cutting weight. Um, so so I remember that, and I hit. We hit pretty hard. I I I. I 
I don't know, bruised a rib or something. How are the ribs? It, it's to, if I cough or or sneeze or and that's been what two or three weeks. Yeah, it's supposed hey, to. I've take... watched the video over and over, and you can see it if you watch the video. You see me hey, hit and then jerk y'all, back. You guys sent that truck. Nobody. You watch the you watch the full three hour video, guys, and you're not going to see anybody launch like. Like these that. guys launched in this truck, and one of the commentaries was like, "That's the biggest air we've seen." Oh yet. yeah, and nose first, and the bump still worked perfect. Yep, the, the the tires were straight. I noticed that, and I played it in slow mo many many times. But if you'll watch it super slow, you'll see Broadway half out of the truck. You know, I'm not even sure his feet were still on the cargo <laughs> net. Half out of the truck and still holding on that steering wheel. Oh, he wheel. had a he had a death grip on the steering wheel, and when he came down, uh, the rear shock mount was on the right side, right in the middle between the between the two guys. Cased it right on the ribs. Oh, right on the oh, ribs. Oh man, you could tell because immediately you kind of you know your reaction was to jerk away from that. Yeah, and so you were going to the hay bales and you corrected it. Yep. And man, you, you kind of made a little right correction, just not overcorrecting, just just got off the hay bales. Yep. And I watched the video. Right rear tire comes off the ground. I mean, it was like, man, that thing was just super light at that point, and made that correction. And all this is happening in nanoseconds. And then y'all cross that finish line, and you well, whipped it around. And about just, that, so. I, wa- I was watching all the cars that were ahead of us. We were about we were twenty first, so mm-hmm. we were right dead in the middle yep. of the forty seven yep. um, ish. And every single one ahead of us, it was like a ramming contest. They wanted yeah, to see who bells, hit the hay bales the hardest. Go flying bam, off, bam. whatever. So I looked over at Jay. We we're about three from going in the lineup, and I was like, "Dude, we gotta do something different." Like yeah. I can't. I, I have uh, my personality in life is like if if you're asking me what to do we're going to do it different than anyone else right on because i want to stand out right on. so i was like man because we had tested the brakes the a couple days before down a hill in paris texas yeah we put some good brakes and on. and jay locked them up in in the practice run down a yeah. hill here in paris and he's like i know i can lock them up i was like, what if you lock them up and i'm gonna cut it I'm yeah. gonna go in wide. Oh man, Hayden, y'all did it perfect. Oh man, and we as we soon did. as you whipped that thing to the left, he nailed the brakes. <laughs> that old truck was just sliding in there sideways, just chirping the tires, the bodies bouncing everywhere. As soon as it stopped, y'all's hand, y'all, y'all both lean back like it's over. And both hands, I mean, just out of joy, your hands were in there. And I wish y'all could have heard the crowd, man. I'm sure. Do you remember the crowd? No. (laughs) It was. The crowd went crazy, dude. I remember. So I remember me and Jay talked through the whole process. It was like. I could. I remember going big bump, big bump, big bump. You know, like this is the big one. This is the big one. Hang oh. on. And then I was like, okay, get ready on the brakes. Get ready on the brakes. I remember talking through the whole thing. And there's one point as y'all are pounding, uh, as, yeah. as y'all are pointing to the crowd going out through there, like this ain't nothing. We got this. There was one point at, at the 38 miles an hour. Uh, I I get let go one hand off the the wheel and I start pointing to the crowd and raising my hand yep, yep, yep. and all I hear is Jay is like both hands on the wheel both hands on the wheel it's like I got this I Jay got, I got this bro it'll be fine it'll oh. be fine and we get to the end and I cut it and he breaks it oh and man if you should if you should see it there's a hay bale you gotta go watch this like, anybody that's listening to this please go watch it's it all, where can they find that video where it's, can they find it uh, it's on our Instagram it's uh, I, you know what I, I'll post it on my um on my Facebook page, my Colin Hadley has it. Yep, Colin. Had, I'll post one of his videos. I'll post it on the Paris, Texas, a podcast page, so y'all awesome. can go watch it after this releases. I'll yeah. post it. Um, if you and on one of them, and I don't remember if it was Colin's or not. If you look, there was only probably a few inches on both sides of the truck. There was hay bale and a hay oh, row of hay bale. Hey, you parallel parked that oh. thing. I'm talking about it was just like slid beautiful. it in there. Oh, it was beautiful. Wasn't it was it like Ace Ventura, yeah. like, <laughs> like a glove. <laughs> it was in there, and I—I I wish you could remember the 
hearing the crowd because me and Kevin standing up on the hill, up there at the start finish line, yeah. and we're watching on the big screen because when y'all went through the car wash, we couldn't see anything else. So we're watching it on the big screen. And to hear the commentators, well, we're not sure this thing's going to blah, blah, blah. And, man, here, and then the next thing, oh, my, they're going to hit. Did you see the air? Oh, my God. They're going to hit the fastest time. And then y'all spun it out, and they were like, what? One guy called it the Dukes of Hazard spin out. The Dukes of Hazard burnout. Burnout, (laughs) that's what it was. The Dukes of Hazard burnout. Man, it was epic. And I, I remember... That last, I mean, that uh, millisecond felt like a minute. Like, I was right, like, did right. that just work? Oh, it worked. And then so, and then I remember both of our hands just going up and like, yeah. I mean, it, it it was, for me, it was a bucket list moment. It was me getting to be in your shoes for like a hot, hot second. Oh, man, you, I've never had a crowd that big. Oh, don't even start with that. No, that was awesome. No, nah, I don't even start with that. You've you had, had like 10,000 There was people. not 10,000 people. I don't there. know, man. There was 10,000. Easy. It, 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 was, it was truly a moment to remember for me. Oh, you guys rocked it. Y'all sent it, son. And to uh, with you and Jay Ryan, and I tell you what, I mean, Kevin and I had a lot of fun building that truck, and spent a lot of time and I mean we took the hubs and put grinded them, the, them down well, so they weighed less yeah, that you did some the, really tricky put them on stuff the mill and 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 milled them down to the lightest we could get them and then then drilled lightning holes in them and you know but the wheels and tires I wanted to leave those alone because we needed that rotating weight and you know I mean there's a lot of things I was looking at did the car perform exactly the way I wanted it? No. Well, and here's but, the deal. We both spent but, a lot of times looking up stuff. Yeah. And we watched a lot of people fail oh, on yeah. little tires. Oh, all of them. So I would risk big tires over oh, no, breaking worked, little it tires. Worked perfect because I, I, took the, uh, I took all the bearings out of those hubs, and they had that real thick uh, wheel bearing grease, you know, because they come off a trailer. They're ready to go running up and down the road. I took cleaned all of that out and put some really light teflon teflon infused oil in them super light i didn't even run wheel seals in that thing i didn't want any drag and i mean it was just kevin and i spent before y'all took it to the racetrack we spent four hours on the scales and just going over it making sure that everything was the the bolts were spot on yeah it was just spot on and you know, we learned a lot. I oh, mean, yeah. Hey, running fourth out of 47, first time out. Oh, I would say that, too. We learned a ton. If we were to ever do this again, um, ever do this again. That was the most fun I've had. We would do years. some, we would have some changes that I think would rock some people's minds. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. Prototype. That would be a good good name for it. Yeah, prototype. Yeah. So, Let's put a motor on that one. Yes. And did I tell uh, you my idea the other day about the motor in the trailer? Oh, you did. So yes. put a motor yeah. on the motor on the the current soapbox car. Yeah. And yeah. we build we build a little like trailer so we, and put a little hitch on the back of the yeah, current one. No, I want to build an enclosed trailer. Enclosed trailer. Yeah, and then we'll pull out trophy truck 2.0 2.0 we put up in the trailer so when we pull up to the next thing, we'll roll up like we Hey, if you thought that was fast going down a hill with no motor put a motor on it oh give me about a week it's terrifying terrifying <laughs> i don't know my wife might not let me get in it, get in it anymore well it just uh, depends on how far you push the accelerator uh-huh. and and it, thank you so much for doing all that you did for us for that so far man, man that was that was so much fun we would have never got that far we just showed up looking like a bunch of kids. Hey, well, I, you know, you guys had a had everything going before we showed up. We uh, we accented you guys with y'all's vision of a truck. Yeah. You know, so I mean, it was really it was y'all's deal. We just happened to know how to put them together. Yeah. And uh, man, I can't wait for the next time, dude. Yeah. And if you guys get a chance, y'all should go check it out up at Maximum Elevation. It's on show right outside the front door. Um, as long as the weather's permitted, we put it out there. And it, it's still it's still race race condition. You can see where the tires rubbed and the body kind of came off just a little bit. And, yeah. Um, 
it's it's yeah, my, yeah I might have squeezed the steering wheel to the point that it's broken but you know whatever um and and I will I'll post the video a couple maybe a couple videos and a couple photos of that event on my Facebook group so if you haven't go follow that and you'll get to see that yeah um, so yeah that was built by Danny Booth Ironworks. Danny, but and if you haven't, go follow Danny Booth Ironworks because he's got and some we skill. We don't normally build trophy trucks or race cars, but for the right, we price. do. We do know. <laughs> we, we do know how. We do, do know that. how, and we we we've got talent. <laughs> but uh, man, I prefer custom entry doors. Yeah, and circle staircases. Oh, spiral staircases. Yeah, let's make that. Let's, let's make that, that a thing fun stuff yeah um and thank you for being on my podcast no man thank you man this has been a blast um and yeah you guys thank you for joining us uh danny as always his epic and awesome go check him out on facebook um uh as always we put out a new podcast every monday so stay tuned for next monday's guest and check out and see who it is if you haven't as i said earlier go follow us on my facebook page it's paris texas a podcast and um yeah and we uh, i want to give one more shout out to the uh blue belt con- contracting uh these guys do um contract work if you need somebody like that go check them out on facebook uh blue belt and if you need to reach out to them you can give them a call at 903-517-2227 and uh we'll see you guys next week awesome